How is everyone doing today? Yeah. All right, you guys can stand your feet. I just want to read, read this, Luke 15, verse 20, and then I just want to pray uh, over the message and what we're going to be talking about. So Luke 15, verse 20, and it says, And he arose... And he came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Everyone say compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I'm not worthy. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Everyone say, put it on him. Put it on him. And then I'm not stopping there and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Woo. So the name of the message today, part two or part three of We Are Family is Family Reunion. Family Reunion. Woo. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. I just want to know, like, I just want to let you know this. My mom knows this. My wife knows this. I have been through hell with this message this week. I mean, I've just, I literally finished the message this morning because, I mean, it was just, it was just a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of warfare. And so I really believe that today is going to, God's going to speak to you. God's going to speak to your heart. And those of you who are watching, God's going to, God's going to speak to you, your situation. And so Holy Spirit, have your way today. Father, I prepare, but Lord, we need your supernatural power. We need your supernatural increase, Lord. We, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the overflow, not only upon my life, but on everyone who is here and everyone who is watching today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, for, for healing hearts that have been broken. Father, I thank you for reconciling marriages that are ready to split. I, I pray, Lord, that you would reconcile father-daughter relationships and father-son relationships and mother-son and mother-daughter relationships. Father, I pray for healing of the family because the family is the focal point. It is the reason why we do what we do. It's because of the family reunion. You sent Jesus so that we can have a family reunion. And so, Lord, I pray for a family reunion for people right now, people that you haven't spoken to, people that you have unforgiveness, people that, that you guys fell out. Lord, I pray for reconciliation for relationships this year, no, not only this year, no, I challenge it this week in the name of Jesus, this week, Lord God, this week, there's somebody that you need to call. You can turn me up just a little bit, I think. There's somebody that you need to call. Who, who am I talking to? <laughs> who is the Lord talking to? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the prophetic to just move today. There's someone that you need to call. There's someone that, that hurts you, that disappointed you, but you need to call them. You've been waiting for them to call you, but you need to call them because you are a child of God. You, you, he, he wants you to call them, even if it was their fault, to say, you know what, I just want to tell you I love you. You don't got to bring up the situation. You don't have to replay what happened, but God just wants you to reach out to them just to say, hey, I love you and God loves you too. And so, Lord, I pray for that, Lord. You know, life is too short to be prideful. Life is too short to be prideful. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just speak to people today. In the name of Jesus. If you're in agreement, everyone say amen. 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 You may be seated. (laughs) All right, Evan, this this is now the time. (laughs) Thanks, man. Wow, we're got, li- listen, this is, I'm, I'm stepping out on faith today because I, I don't know where God um, is taking us, but I know we're going somewhere amazing. Amen. 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 Who has ever been to a family reunion in your life? Okay. Now, the family reunions that I grew up with, that I, that I grew up in, um, if you've seen Medea family reunion, you understand the family reunion that I'm talking about, okay? And growing up, I, I used to love family reunions. I still love it now. No, my mom's about to get mad. I still love family reunions. Growing up as a kid, I really appreciated it because I just loved all the activities. I loved traveling. I loved seeing, you know, family from across, you know, across the country, sometimes across the world that would come into these family reunions. And the food was great. 
The music was awesome. I mean, I had, a, I had a really, 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 really good time. Has anyone had fun at family reunions? Anybody had fun? Guess not a lot of people. Is that bad, huh? <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you know, I loved everything about the family reunion, but the one thing that I cannot ever stand about these family reunions are these T-shirts. The family reunion T-shirt still haunts me to this day. And you had to wear it. If you know what I'm talking about, okay, these T-shirts would have the family name on it and everyone would have to wear it. And the T-shirts would be the most, you know, awkward color. You, You can't match with anything. And so as a kid, I was like, I'm not wearing it. As a teenager, I was like, I'm definitely not wearing it. And I couldn't stand it. And then we would go to the coolest places with it on. And everybody would be walking together, and everyone else would be looking at us, taking pictures. <laughs> Just, it, was, it was traumatizing at times, this T-shirt. But as I got older, I started to appreciate this T-shirt because I realized that this T-shirt brought everybody together. Like, when everyone had these family T-shirts on, it distinguished us as a family. You didn't even have to know anybody that well, but when you put the T-shirt on, and they had the T-shirt on, and you were out in public, it was like, all right, we're doing this together. (laughs) We're being humiliated together. (laughs) And because of that, there was this bond. There was this tie that we had as family, you know? It set the tone of who we are as a family. And I just want to let you know that God has a family, and you are a part of the family of God. And what ties us together, our spiritual family reunion t-shirt says love. It is love. Love is what binds us. Love is what brings us together. Love is, is the staple of the family of God. It is the staple of who we are. Love. Everyone say love. This is what it says in 1 John 4, 7. I got a bunch of scriptures, so we're going to get into the word. Can we get into the word today? Get into the word. 1 John 4, 7, this is what it says. It says, be loved. Let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Oof. John 13, 35, this is what it says. This is our t-shirt. Like, when people come near you, people... People can see in the spirit what you are wearing. They, they can identify like the family that you're a part of. That's how it's supposed to be. You, you know, people are not supposed to know who you are because of how much you know. People are not supposed to know who you are because you carry a big Bible. People are not supposed to know who you are just because you have a cross around your neck. No, people are supposed to see something on you that distinguishes you as a part of the family of God. And this is what it says in John 13, 35. It says, by this... Everybody is going to know that you are my disciples because you go to church on Sunday, because you know a couple of scriptures, you like praying for people at all the family dinners, okay? No, it it says because if you have love for one another, if you have love for one another, everyone say love. Love. As I talked about last week, some of you guys were here, but I talked about Bob Jones, a prophet who went to heaven, and he's standing before Jesus, and, and Jesus looks him in the eyes, and Jesus asks him one question. He could have asked him any other question in the world, but he looks at him in the eyes, and he says, did you learn to love? Did you learn to love? That's the question that Jesus asks. That's what's on his mind. That's what's on his heart is our love life. Oof. That's so powerful. Matthew 25, verse 35, I shared this last week, and I want to share it again to kind of set the tone of where we're going. Jesus, this is, this is prophetic for, I mean, really, when, when it's our time to stand before God. And this is what he's going to say to people. And so many people are going to be just kind of just caught off guard because what we're taught here on earth is that we have to perform, we have to behave, you know, we have to live under the law, we have to, you know, and that's why so many people are so intimidated of God and and coming near God or the Bible or anything that has to look like a church in any type of way, because when they hear it, they hear, oh God, I have to, I have to perform, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to fulfill these rules and obligations and, and, these, and these, you know, these legislations, like we have to do all these different things, and God is not even looking at that. I want, you, I want you to see what he actually is looking at. It says, Jesus says, when we're standing before him, he's going to say to a group of people, he's going to say, for I was hungry, verse 35, for I was hungry and you gave me 
food. I'm sorry, this is Matthew 25, 35. Is that the wrong one? Are we there? Okay. Okay, that's Matthew. Okay, that's Matthew 22. Can you go to Matthew 25? Okay. So it says, for I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And then the righteous will answer him and say, Jesus, what in the world are you talking about? (laughs) When did we ever feed you? When did we ever visit you? Like, when did this happen? And this is what he says. He says in verse 40, he says, And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. You did it to me. That when we serve people, that when we love people, we're not doing it just to them. We're doing it to Jesus. And last week I talked about how when we're rude to people, you have to understand this. We're not just being rude to them. We're being rude to Jesus. You know what I mean? Like when we go off on people, when we have unforgiveness, when we hold offense against other people, we're really just having it against Jesus. When we're cold to people, when we ignore other people, when we put people down, we're not doing it to the person. We are doing it to Jesus. And God wants us to take this love walk seriously because God is in love with his people. Amen? You know, when I was uh, uh, talking a bunch of things when I was a kid, but... uh, (laughs) One of my favorite movies growing up was Home Alone. Anybody ever seen Home Alone? Home Alone? Home Alone was my joint. And in Home Alone, you know, there was this one character that everybody was afraid of. This one character, he was a, you, you see it, he was an elderly man that lived across the street from Kevin, Kevin's house. And so his brother tells him this rumor about the neighbor. And so there's this moment, and everyone is looking at this old man, and he's coming out, and he's shoveling snow, and he looks very scary and intimidating. And, and basically, the rumor is, is, like, this dude has killed people before. So they, everyone's afraid. And so now, the next time Kevin sees this man up close, he gets so scared that he screams, and he runs away. But the truth about him was actually that he was a loving man. He was really a loving man. He was a grandfather. He was a really, really nice, warm man. But because Kevin, all Kevin heard was the rumors about this man, these negative, scary rumors, that when he saw him, all he did was react in fear, and he ran away. And so many people have heard so many rumors about Jesus. So many people have heard so many rumors about God that they think God is this mean, mean man that is just looking to judge us and send us to hell, that, that if you live for God, he's, he's going to take your life and make it boring. And so anytime God comes close, we have this reaction that we get scared and we want to run away. But I want to show you who God is. This is God. This is 1 John 4, 16. And I want you to know this because this is what's going to propel you to move forward in your relationship with him. You know, when we don't draw closer to him, it's because there's things that are in our heart that we don't know about. There's things in our subconscious. There's things from our past. There's things that we've been taught. And 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 although we have a love for God, there's so many things that we're battling in our spirit and in our hearts because of the rumors that we've heard. 1 John 4, 16, this is simply what it says. Basically, it says, God is love. God is love. This is so powerful. Everyone say, God is love. God is love. love. You see, God did not create love. He didn't just create love. He doesn't just love a lot. God is love. Like, that is who he is. He is love. And I believe if we understood the depths of this, that God is love, you know, the, the, the voice of wrath that you hear isn't God. The voice of disappointment that you hear isn't God. The voice that God is upset, that's not God. God is love. And when it is time for a teaching moment, he does it in love. He doesn't, do, he doesn't talk to you like, 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 like you're his enemy. He does it in love. He is love. And this is what it says in John 3.16, as I talked about last week. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world. Everyone say the world. world. And I'm going somewhere. God so loved the world. Our heart is to get to a level where we're able to see and love like God. Because there's something powerful that happens when you can do that. 
a lot of the issues that we're facing today, a lot of the things that we're carrying is because we are very selfish. It's all about us. We walk around with such a victim spirit. We look at our life, we look at all of our issues, we look at all, all of our problems, and every time we go to God, the first thing that we pray about is us. God, I need more money. God, can you help me here? God, I'm so, like, we're so about us. And, and, and so what I believe that God is trying to do is he's trying to raise our mindset. He's trying to raise our hearts to the next level. Because if you can understand that the kingdom is about people, then everything else will be there that you need. If you can change your heart and your mind today that says, God, use me. I'm t- like, we, we're in this mentality where we walk around and we miss out on so much that God wants to do around us and through us because we're so thinking about us. We're so thinking about us getting anxious. We're so thinking about us having a fear of rejection. We're so thinking about us having a fear of failure. Instead of saying, God, how do you want to use me? It says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. He gave Jesus. God so loves the community that you are a part of. God so loves your family. God so loves the job that you're working at. God so loves your neighbors that he puts you where you are on purpose. Yes, I know their music is too loud sometimes, but he puts you there on purpose. And maybe your music is loud too sometimes. Um, But God puts you there on purpose. He put your kids in the school that they are a part of. Everything in your life has been on purpose. And because God loves them so much, he brought you there. But because we are so about us and trying to survive in the world and trying to make it, we miss out on purpose. The purpose that God has for you is amazing. It is fulfilling. It is beyond everything you could ever think, hope, or imagine if you can get out of you and get in him. For God so loved the world. This is what I want your prayer to be. The first thing that you come to God with this week and week after week, and I want you to start making this a part of your life. God, help me to love people. Show me who to love. Show me who to to pray for. Show me who to encourage. Who should I be covering today? Who should I be speaking to today? You have to understand that you cannot outgive God. That, That when you look to put people that he loves as your priority. God says that every need that you have will be provided for. You know, I know missionaries that have told stories, that have gone places. They didn't know how they're going to get the money. They don't know how they're going to do things. But God, people will, people will literally buy their plane tickets, and, and they'll, they'll land. I, there was a story about this guy. Not a story. I talked to him. And he told me, <laughs> this was years ago, he said God gave him a word. He said God, he said God told me to go, it was like Africa. And it was this specific country. And God gave him one instruction. I want you to go to this city or this country in Africa. Just go to the airport. Get on the plane and go to the airport, and I'm taking care of everything. This was the biggest leap of faith for this guy. The biggest leap of faith. He was telling me this story. He was like, man, I'm telling you, I will never doubt God for anything in my life. Let me tell you what happened. So he got the money. Got on this plane. I forgot how long the plane ride was. And he gets to the airport. He doesn't know where he's going to stay. He doesn't know anybody there. He doesn't have any idea what in the world he's doing in another country. He has no idea. He literally is walking in the airport. And as he walks in the airport, he sees a man holding a sign with his name on it. It doesn't stop there. He's like, okay. (laughs) He goes to the guy, introduces himself. He's, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, we've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. And, and he was like, oh, okay. Um, so he goes outside. There's a limo. So he's like, okay. <laughs> he gets into the limo, and he told me that they took him to this hotel. They put him in, like, the best, like, suite. He had an appointment to meet with, with, a, with the ambassador of the nation, he had an appointment to meet with an ambassador of the nation. And, I, and, and, and this person who was an ambassador was also a believer, and God told him that a man of God was coming to town to see him. And so because of that appointment, he started having connections with not only the government there, but, but different you know, you know, people in the city, and God just set him up. But he told me that all he had was a word from God. He said it was a miracle after miracle after miracle that God set it up completely supernatural because he got out of himself. If he would have been thinking about himself and his life, 
and the things that are not going right in his family and his marriage and with his friends and just, you know, uh, opportunities that have, that, that have been missed and just saying, woe is me, and just in this place of just depression and sadness and, and cranky and a bad mood, like he would have never heard this word from God. But because he came to Jesus every day and said, God, use me. You said you love the world. Well, I'm, I'm here to be your hands and feet. Use me, God. And so because he would seek God, God was like, all right, well, I got somebody that wants to go. <laughs> And because I got somebody that wants to go, here you go. Because God is looking throughout the earth. He's looking for someone to say, God, send me, I'll go. Send me into the industry. Send me into this neighborhood. Send me into this school. Send me, God, I will go. But many of us have been so caught up in this culture of self with social media and everything is about us that we miss God's voice. We're wondering, oh, God, I feel the Holy Spirit. I'm going to keep going. We're wondering, oof. Why we are not hearing the voice of God. Let me answer your question. The reason why we're not hearing the voice of God is because we're too thinking, too much thinking about ourselves. We're constantly thinking about ourselves and our issues and everything we have going on where it literally drowns the voice of God. And the Lord is saying, you're going to hear me say a whole lot if you can make your mission about my mission. Now, let me take it to the next level. If you can make your mission my mission. Like your assignment, your life is all based on what God has called you to do. Where you are right now, I don't care where you work or what you're a part of, what you're connected to, whatever you're doing, even if you're homeschooling, like I know we have parents in the house, whatever you are doing, God, what is my mission in this season? How do you want to use me? Let it be about his work. And I guarantee you, you'll start seeing giftings come out that you've never seen before. You'll start seeing supernatural things happen. You'll start seeing a grace that comes through you because now you understand it is not about you, but it's because God so loved the world. God loves the world. He loves the people around you. He loves your friends. He loves the people that have done you wrong. He loves you. You know, last week I shared about two different loves, and this is the love that we have to go to. But I talked about worldly love, and I talked about kingdom love, which is the love of Jesus. And worldly love is a love that we've been, been exposed to. This, it's the only love that we know. It's our culture's love. If you love me, I'll love you back. If you don't reject me, I won't reject you. If you talk to me, I'll talk to you. If you smile at me, then I guess I'll smile at you if it's not weird. You know, it's like, like we wait. It's all predicated based on how we feel. Our love has conditions. So it's based on how you feel and how people make you feel. But people who don't know God, we talked last week that Jesus was giving an example about people who don't know him. And he was like, they do the same thing you do. They love people that, that, that love them. They, you know, they, they're in the same thing. So what's the difference between you and them? The difference between you and them is that God is calling us to a higher love. This is the kingdom love. This is a love that leads people to Jesus because they do not get it. I remember when I got this revelation of this love, God began to challenge me. <laughs> and he put me in some situations, man, because that's what God wants to do. He wants to, listen, this is the word, but he wants you to live the word. So we're hearing it right now. But if you receive it, God's going to put you in a situation probably this week where you're going to be thinking, oh, pastor said that. Oh, I'm in a situation right now. Okay. You know, I'm telling you, because God will never, like, everything that you hear, you will take a test. You will take a test. So just be prepared right now. Everything we hear, you will be tested on. I've been tested on as well. I remember I was, um, I was, I was, giving a, I was doing the message just last week, and I was writing down the scripture about when Jesus was, when Jesus was like, when you visit people in jail. You're doing it to me. I'm not lying to you. As soon as I was typing it in here, my phone rang to one of my friends who's in jail. And I didn't catch it because I'm so busy. I'm like, in this, it's like, you know, Saturday night. I'm like, I got to get this message ready. You know what I mean? The phone rings and it's him. And I'm like, I was about to press ignore. Like, okay, I, 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 this is bad, bad timing, man. Bad, bad timing. I'll just talk to you later. And I was about to press ignore. And the Holy Spirit said, I am testing you right now. Like, literally the thing that I am talking about and speaking about, he put me in the, in the test at that moment. So I just answered the phone quick. I was like, hello? Hello? <laughs> How you doing, man? Love you. Okay. I was like, in that moment. But anyways, God would be putting me in situations when he gave me this revelation on love. And I remember I had to get my car fixed, and this guy took advantage of me. He really, really did. I didn't know a lot about cars. I wish I had Eric back then, who was the most awesome mechanic in the world. Give it up for Eric. The most awesome mechanic. Call him. Call him. 
Anyways, I didn't have Eric. So I had this, this guy. And this dude, man, I'm telling you, he was taking advantage of me. Have you ever had someone take advantage of you, but you just can't pinpoint where? It's like you don't have enough knowledge about it, but you know something don't make sense. You know something is off, and you can't prove it. You can't be like, man, you ripped me off right here because this is this and this. I didn't have any knowledge, so he was like, yeah, this, is, this part is $750, and uh, right here, this, we're going to have to raise you another 300 here, you know, tax. I was like, what? Like, like what is going on? <laughs> It was so overwhelming, but I knew this dude t- was taking advantage of me, and I was so hot, but I, but I felt like I was in a situation where I had no choice but to pay the money. And so as I was walking in there to pay the money, he signed the receipt. I paid it. I was standing right then and there. The Lord said, I want you to tell him God bless you. I said, huh? He said, tell him God bless you, like two times strong. I was like... God bless you. This man was like, <laughs> I would never forget this face in my entire life. Like, this was like the most surprised, shocking look I probably have ever seen. He was like, God bless you. <laughs> he had never, ever heard anything like that in that situation. And I don't know what God was doing for him. Because when God tells you to do something, it's not our job to analyze why. God wanted me to show him in that situation. I know what you did to me, but I'm standing my ground and I'm showing you that God is here, that God is watching you, that God is seeing how you're handling money and seeing how you're handling this business that you have. And so God spoke to him, but the thing about it was is that God was showing me what you are doing is called kingdom love. It is a love that is supernatural. It is a love that brings conviction. It is a love that makes people be like, oh my God, like... It makes people have no choice but to just look up to God and say, oh, wow. Like, I didn't have to preach to that guy. I didn't have to tell him what he was doing wrong. All I did was just flash some kingdom love. And when I flashed some kingdom love, he was messed up, man. He was messed up. And this has happened many times because God has shown me the power of kingdom love. And so I, we, I, we, 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 love to, we love to do that because it catches people off guard and they don't know how to react. And all they can do is just... Look to God. (laughs) That's all they can do because they know it's supernatural. Man, that's so amazing. Jesus was hanging on the cross with his persecutors. They were spitting at him. They were, they were, they were, you know, they beat him. They whipped him. He's hanging on the cross. They are cursing him. Can you imagine being in this situation where people are beating you up? They are, they are literally tormenting you. And as Jesus is hanging on the cross, the words that come out of him at this moment, this vulnerable moment was, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Do you think you've reached that point yet in your life? That's the place where God is calling us. That's the place. And I'm going to show you how to get there. Because I know right now we're like, <laughs> uh, okay, I love Jesus, but I, I, I don't know if I would be able to do something like that. You know, these people came to Jesus and, and you know, they were, trying to, they were trying to just catch him in something. And this is Matthew twenty two thirty five. 35. This is Matthew twenty two thirty five. 35. They tried to corner him. And this is the revelation that Jesus pulls out. And it just messes everybody up. Matthew twenty two thirty five. 35. It says, then one of them, a lawyer. Matthew 22. 35. I was going to say that part. Say <laughs> trying to be discreet. I was like, Matthew 22. <laughs> All right, here we go. Thank you so much. Matthew twenty-two thirty-five. 35, it says, Then one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question. Now, this lawyer is the same thing as a scribe. These scribes were, you know, they, they had Pharisees and Sadducees and these groups of people. All they tried to do was debate. They were really good at debating. Do you guys know some good debaters? Oh, yeah. Like, they love to debate. And they're trying to debate Jesus. I know Joe, Joe took that personal. He's like... <laughs> Uh, testify, Joe. Uh, <laughs> don't look at your spouse. Don't look at your spouse. Don't look at, don't look at, okay. All right. So it says that one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the greatest thing that we need to do on earth? What is it, God? What is it? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And that's cool. Like, okay, we can handle that. We can handle pursuing God. But then Jesus says this, and it messes everybody up. This is what he says. 
And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The greatest commandment, get this, the greatest commandment is to love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. But then Jesus says the second commandment is equal to the first commandment, which is loving people. You ha- Loving people. We have seen, and this is the reason why people are turned off from the term Christian and church, and people don't want to go near anyone because they think people are full of just, we're hypocrites. It's because they don't understand how we can say we love Jesus, but then oppress people. They don't understand how we say we love Jesus, but then we're racist. (laughs) They don't understand how we say we love Jesus, but we going off on everybody on Facebook. That we say we love Jesus, but then we start attacking people. Something is not right. Jesus is saying you can't have one without the other. You can't say that you love me, but then you just keep fighting and, and going after people. And having beef with people and, 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 and telling, you know, telling people off. Something is not, something's not right. Something is a little off. I think something in our heart is a little off with our love. Because there's no way that you can truly, truly love Jesus and, and disrespect people. I'm not saying that just because you love Jesus, you're not going to be perfect. Listen, we all have issues. I say this every single week. We have issues. I go off at moments of my life. And, and, but what I'm saying is there's a difference between, between a lifestyle of it and a moment of it. There, there's a difference between, okay, I had a bad day at work. <laughs> I shouldn't have said this to that person. That person was just getting on my nerves. Okay, I came home. I was just in the wrong space. Because God is like, look, as human beings, we're going to go through our stuff. But the, but the cool thing about humility and the thing that God is calling us to do Love is, is how you get back up from that, you know? Love is saying, coming to the person, coming to the situation and say, you know what, I can do better than that. I'm a much better person than, than how I portray myself. I'm sorry. That's love. So love is not saying that you're going to be perfect. Love is saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I let you down. I'm sorry that I offended you. That is love. Amen? Amen. And so God is saying, if you're going to love me, I need you to love people. I need you to love people. And so I want to get here. Where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? I want to go back to purpose. Purpose. God is calling us to move in our purpose. He's, moving, he's calling us to move in our purpose. And let me tell you how. Jesus came and he took our place on the cross. He took our place on the cross. He died for us. And when he died for us, he rose again. And he sent his spirit to live on the inside of us. And something powerful happens. Jesus' body went to heaven, but his body and the spirit got multiplied in us. A lot of people look at the world and they see how dark it is, and they're asking, where is God? Has anybody ever asked you that? If God is so real, how come there's so much darkness in the world? If God is so real, well, how come my neighborhood looks like this? How come this happened to this family? How come this person got molested? How come this person got abused? If, if God is real and we're blaming God and we're, we're coming at God, but God is like, I am still on the earth through my people. <laughs> we can't blame God. We have to blame ourselves because we are the body of Christ. Look at this. This is 1 Corinthians 12, 27. He says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and members individually. I want you to have a second. We're going to play this little game, little game, okay? So I want you to have a moment. I want you to envision yourself, wherever you are right now. I want you to envision yourself getting up right now. Don't really get up. Just envision it. You're getting up. (laughs) You're going outside to your car. You open your door. And when you get into the car, you put the keys in the ignition, and you start your car. Okay, now we're back. Now, that was a vision of you doing it, but did you actually do it? You didn't do it because in order for it to actually really be done, you have to get up, use your body, walk out, get in the car, and actually start the car to do it. God has a vision. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future, but all I need now is my body. Now I need people to be put in position. 
Now I need people to say, I'll go use me. Let me be the hands. Let me be the feet. You, you see, you're not, just, you're not just where you are just because of where you are. It's, it's not a coincidence that everything in your life is connected to you the way it is. It is on purpose. And God has a plan for it. He has called you. He has chosen you. You have a destiny. You have a purpose that is so big, that is so high in God. And God is saying, stop looking at yourself and disqualifying yourself and putting yourself down and saying, well, I'm not this person and I'm not that, and I can't do that. No, everything that you have in you is on purpose, and God has given it for you, and you are his body, and he wants to use you. Amen? So the point of this, and this is where I'm going to be closing, the point of all of this that I'm talking about today is saying that many of us, so now you understand now that, that God is love, that God loves people. He wants you to, to love people. But many of us are still unable to walk in this love. And this is what I want to talk about. Why we are unable to walk in this level of love. I'm going to go back to the family reunion. <laughs> I remember one family reunion because I couldn't stand those T-shirts. I couldn't stand those T-shirts. Those family T-shirts just drove me crazy. And so what I did was I wanted to cheat the system. And so what I did was, I remember, I was trying to be cool, I think it was like 14, 15, and I remember I got the t-shirt, and everybody was wearing it, but I just put the t-shirt around my neck, you know? We were sitting down, so I had it, you know what I mean? So I was with it. So because I had this t-shirt, I wasn't wearing the t-shirt, I was walking with it. I didn't have it on, I didn't put it on, but I had it, I had it with me, I was walking with it. And the reason why... We know Jesus, but our attitudes are Lord. The reason why we know Jesus, but pride calls all the shots in your life. The reason why we know Jesus and we know his word, but, but how we were raised in our tradition makes all the decisions in our life. is because although we know Jesus, we're walking with Jesus, but we're not walking in Jesus. And I want to show you what is the missing link between where you are today and the love that God is calling you to walk in? It's because you're walking on the side of him. You're walking on the side of him. My little brother told me um, this powerful dream that he had, and it was a dream where he was, he was running with Jesus, and there was a bunch of people chasing him, and he said this, it represented his problems, and his problems were chasing him and Jesus. And he's running with Jesus, and the problems are chasing behind. And Jesus stops him and says, give me a hug. And my brother would look back. He saw his problems coming, and he was like, Jesus, the problems are coming. We got to go. We got to go, Jesus. And Jesus wasn't thinking about the issues. He wasn't thinking about the problems. He said, he said give me a hug. And he had to give Jesus a hug. And when he looked up, all the problems were gone. And I want to show you how you can walk with Jesus Run in Jesus, not walk next to Jesus, not run next to Jesus, but walk in Jesus. And that happens when you receive what he did. And this is what we're going to get here. This is, this is, I'll say, I'll put Colossians 2, 6 says, as you therefore have received Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. So walk in him. Colossians 3, 12 says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But of all, the, all, but all these things, put on love. I know it feels corny to be wearing the t-shirt, but God is saying, I need you to put on this. You have to wear it every single day. We don't complain about getting dressed every day to go out of the house. And God is saying, I need you to put on my love because we've just been having the love kind of just hanging around our neck. And that's why we've been having these love issues. And we're going to close with this. This is Luke 15. Luke 15. So the prodigal son, the prodigal son has this issue with the father. And he's, he, he goes off and he does a bunch of nonsense. Has anyone ever done nonsense in your life? He does a bunch of nonsense and he's, he's running from the Father. He's running from God and he has a lot of issues in his life. And, and so he gets to the point in his life where he feels like he just can't go forward in the life that he's living. And I know many of us have been there. And so he comes back 
to the father. And I want to close with this. And it says, and he, and he arose and he came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Compassion. I want to let you know that in order to get to this next level of love in your life, the first thing that you have to do right now is receive the compassion of God. He wants you to receive his compassion. He was a great way off. He was a great way off, and he had, God had compassion for him. Compassion. A lot of us, we reject. We, we, try, we try to be strong. And God is saying, receive my compassion. It says that he had compassion, and he ran, and he fell on his neck, and he kissed him. God is very, very affectionate. His spirit is very, very affectionate, and he loves you. And it says that the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. This is so important because Jesus said the two commandments are the same. He said, love God with all your heart, but love your neighbor as yourself. Everyone say yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. But what if you don't like yourself? This is where I've got to end here. What if you don't like yourself? What if you judge yourself? What if you think that yourself, you think you're not worthy? Well, how are you going to love people like that if you love yourself like that? And this is the revelation. This is the revelation. It says... Many of us are not able to love on the level where God is calling us to do. And I want to show you this. It's because we can only love on the level that we love ourselves. We can only love on the level that we love ourselves. You thought that you were struggling with love with people. You thought you had a problem with loving people and your temper with people and your patience with people. But because you have your temper with people and your impatience with people and you snap at people, it's because there's something that you have against yourself. There is a disappointment that you have against yourself. You could be mad at yourself. You could have unforgiveness for yourself. And because you don't like yourself and you're having issues with yourself, you, you put that on other people. And so when you believe you're unworthy with God, that you, you have to work to prove to get his love, then in a sense, you, have to, you make other people work to prove in your life the love from you. When you are judging yourself and you are judgmental and critical of yourself, it's a good chance that you judge and you're critical of other people. And so this is what happens. It says that the prodigal son, it says, he says, I'm no longer to be worthy to be called your son. And so I want to help you with this moment right here, dealing with unworthiness, dealing with unworthiness. It says, but the father said to his servants, bring out the best. Everyone say the best. Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Bring out the (laughs) T-shirt. Bring out the family reunion t-shirt and put it on him. I don't care where my son has been. I don't care how dirty he is. He does smell, but but we're not going to address that. I I, I don't care about any of that. All I know is that my son is here. And I just want to encourage you. you, You're thinking too much when it comes to God. You're too much in your mind. You're getting too deep. All this son did was just show up. He just showed up and said, Dad, I'm here, and that was enough, and that he was good enough. He didn't have to read the Bible. He didn't have to come and pray, get on his knees, sprinkle some water. He, he, he didn't have to perform. He didn't have to go through three months straight of, of not messing up. All he did was just show up, feeling unworthy. And if you feel unworthy, it's because you never show up. And God is saying the reason why you can't love people on the level that I'm calling you to, the reason why you only walk in worldly love is because you don't ever stand in my kingdom love with me alone. He has a moment with the Father, one-on-one. He feels like crap. He is feeling dirty. He is feeling pitiful. He just messed up. He hurt a lot of people. He, He... Feels so embarrassed, so humiliated, so ashamed, so, so just, I mean, just all the emotions that he is going through. And the father says nothing about it, but comes and puts the clothes on him, puts the robe on him, loves him, puts his arms around him, showers him with love, showers him with that. And God is saying, 
After this guy, I'm sure the prodigal son (laughs) received the love. You see, the prodigal son represents you and I. It represents people that have been far from God. What happens is is that this prodigal son, I know for, for a fact, after this moment with God, will go on to spread God's love across the world. In order to spread God's love across the world, and in order to spread God's love in your household, with your spouse, with your family, with your kids, in order to spread this level of love, a love that is unconditional, a love that says, I'm sorry, a love that says, you know what, I know you, I know you were wrong, but, but I let this offense go. A love that says, God, you are my king. This love comes because you have your moment sitting with God, feeling unworthy. And when you're unworthy before God, all God wants to do, he doesn't want to bring up what you did. He, and if he does, it's in a teaching, it's in a teaching moment. How can we do better next time? But he's not bringing it up to make you feel awful. He's bringing it up because he wants to take you to where he has for you. Can you guys stand to your feet, please? I really do believe that this is the time where God is raising up his people. He's raising up sons and daughters that will not, will will stop talking about it. Stop talking about, you know, God doing this and God doing that. Stop talking about stuff, but living it out. He wants us to live out his love, and you can live out his love, but if you're feeling unworthy, you're never going to be able to love on the level that God has called you to. If you have low self-esteem, if you beat yourself up and you have self-hate against yourself and you're always criticizing and judging yourself, you will never, ever be able to tap into the love, the unconditional, powerful, powerful love of God. And before I was able to step into the love where God called me to serve on, I had moments every day as a man where I'm crying before God, where God has his arms around me, where I'm just immersed in his love and the forgiveness, and he started addressing my past and my issues. But that's how I receive his love. And because I received his love, all I want to do is share his love. I blew it so many times, and he forgave me, and he never gave up on me. And so when you blow it, I don't want to give up on you. I don't want to give up on people. Can we have that? Can we have that? So let me pray. Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name. I thank you for your love. I thank you that this message was exactly what people needed to hear right now. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would would put a hunger in our hearts to draw closer to you. To, to come feeling unworthy, to come with our mess, with our dirt, just to be there and sit down with you, just to say, God, I'm here, just to say, God, I need you. Show me your love. Show me your heart. And I pray that you would meet people where they are, that you would surround them with your love and your power, that we would be transformed and live and walk as your love. If you've never made a decision to invite Jesus to your heart, you can do that right now. He wants to live on the inside of you. His spirit wants to live on the inside of you to use you. And if that is you, just say yes. Just say yes. I receive Jesus. I receive him in my dirt, in my mess. And God says that he he lives on the inside of you to use you for greatness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.